and welcome everyone. This is the present and future of the Dara Flag Packs talk. Uh, Jan, Beran, and, and me work for Red Hat in the desktop team, but we are mostly speaking here as Fedora contributors. Uh, we have had uh, some editions of this talk in the past where we were speaking a bit about the foundations of Flag Packs or how Fedora Flag Packs were built. And today we want to a little bit uh, cover what's the current sta state of the things and uh, maybe move a bit on the future plans we have uh, for Fedora and for, for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, for, for getting Fedora flat packs uh, popular in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So oh. let me mute myself. Hello, uh, I'm uh, Jan Beran, and I would like to uh, tell you something about first in, uh, introduc introduction to flat packs and then something about the current state of Fedora Flatpaks. So uh, first of all, uh, what is a Flatpak? Generally speaking, it's a new way how to distribute your application. You as a user uh, don't, uh, don't see much difference in comparison to, for example, RPM, uh, but under the hood, there are quite uh, big changes. Uh, I will get to that uh, later, but first of all, uh, how Flatpaks are uh, distributed. Uh, you can download Flatpaks from uh, Flathub, which is the biggest uh, app store with Flatpaks, or you can download them with, uh, with uh, GNOME software. Uh, as a user, you, you maybe notice that there are some uh, sandboxing things that generally speaking means that the application itself is isolated from your uh, host operating system and everything that the application needs uh, has to be explicitly uh, permitted in a manifest file that's obviously good because you know what is uh, going on and what uh, resources your application needs and the second difference is that uh, application in Flatpak uh, don't target specific uh, distribution, but they target specific runtime. And that means that if you can install the runtime, you can install the application and uh, run it, no matter what operating system are you using. Uh, there is, so, uh, there is uh, something called SDK. Uh, that's generally speaking for uh, developers. It's a bunch of uh, header files and it allows you to build a flat pack targeting specific runtime. Uh, to, to this slide, uh, you can see the runtime, which is basically a bunch of uh, commonly used libraries that is bundled together and it creates the runtime itself. And if you are uh, building some application, this application uh, looks for its dependencies in the runtime. But of course, it can happen that in the runtime, there are uh, no dependencies, no such libraries that you need, you as the application. But uh, that's not a problem because you can just uh, grab the library and bundle it together with the application itself and send it in the flat pack. To the advantages of flat pack, as I said before, uh, it's cross distribution because flat packs uh, does not target uh, distributions but runtimes. So it's a quite easy way how to do a cross distribution application. You can uh, build the flat pack on your own machine because you you can download the manifest file in case of flat hub uh, flat packs or you can download uh, application.yml and container.yml in case of fedora flat packs and you can build your own flat pack on your own machine as a developer you are also developing against a specific stack uh, stack version so it's good because there is uh, some uh, probability that uh, things will not change. 
And the last three points are about uh, isolation and security, as I was talking about uh, before. Uh, very simply put, application is isolated and you, you as a developer need to specifically say what resources your application needs. By resources, I mean a network connection, a permission to play uh, audio or for, for example, accessing parts of the host file system. And that's it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, when we are talking about Fedora Flatpaks, uh, we need to discuss uh, two things. First, uh, they are based on RPMs in comparison to FlatHub Flatpaks, which are uh, based on the source code itself. Uh, this approach with RPMs means some additional layer of uh, security and uh, transparency because RPMs are maintained and there are uh, spec files, uh, which allows you to check uh, what files are installed and where and even how. And the second big difference is that uh, Fedora Flatpaks use uh, OCI, OCI containers, in comparison to FlatHub, uh, FlatHub Flatpaks that use uh, OST. And if you are talking about the process of flatpacking application in Fedora infrastructure, it consists of three steps. First step is to build a module because we need to rebuild the application itself and its private dependencies with slash app prefix. Uh, these private dependencies are listed in application.yml file. And once we have the module, we can build the container or the flatpack itself. Generally speaking, in uh, Fedora infrastructure, the way how to handle containers and flatpacks is very similar. And in that uh, container.yml file, there are uh, the permissions itself. That means like uh, network permission, uh, host file system permissions, etc. And our flatpacks, Fedora flatpacks live in registry.fedoraproject.org. So if you want to look at the application that, is, uh, that are already uh, flatpacked, you can check this website. And once we have the flat pack, we just distribute it uh, through body and that's it. Uh, so you can, uh, speaking about the current state of flat packs, we have uh, more or less 85 applications currently uh, converted. Uh, we have Delta updates which is good because uh, when you are updating Fedora Flatpaks, you download only the difference between the old and new version. We are working on uh, Langpacks, debug info for developers to better debug the Flatpaks. And the last point that is not uh, Fedora specific, that's uh, Flatpak wide. And we adopted the new Tracker 3 portals. Uh, very simply put, it means that you can specify what parts of tracker information will be showed to your application. Like in case of, for example, some do, uh, document oriented application, you need information only about documents and that's it. You don't need information about videos or music. With these portals, you can do that. And that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, when it comes to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, here first a disclaimer. Uh, a lot of you might know that uh, the way we work in Red Hat is that a lot of us are upstream uh, first. We work uh, very close to the upstream communities. And the things I'm gonna say here are not necessarily uh, plans or, uh, or things that Red Hat has decided, or I'm not speaking on behalf of Red Hat, but speaking on behalf of a Fedora and Flatpak contributor who wants to see it succeed in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Also, because we know that when we see something that we develop upstream succeed in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we know that Red Hat uh, helps the, the project more and uh, 
gives us more and more support to, to push for these ideas. So a lot of things like Flatpak itself, right, are projects that started in upstream communities and they were pushed by, by Red Hat developers upstream and then later they got into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So here's my, that's my, my disclaimer. And the thing I wanted to mention about Red Hat Enterprise Linux and this whole Flatpak story is that uh, when we sell Red Hat Enterprise Linux or when we promote Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we promote it as this uh, stable foundation for people to build their architectures on top, right? Somebody's going to write an application on top of RHEL. RHEL is the base is solid for everything. And this is something I want to, to, to see for the, the RHEL runtimes, right? When we are going to have a, uh, a popular a rail runtime for Flatpak, we are going to have like a stable and supported and and with all the Red Hat experience uh, runtime where developers can target their application. So this is ideal for uh, ensuring that uh, security issues are going to be fixed in the runtime, the developers can reliably uh, target that version of the runtime, uh, knowing that uh, the, the runtime has been built with trust, has been built from RPM packages that are maintained by Red Hat folks and Red Hat has a lot of credibility over that. So uh, that we are very excited about pushing for, for, for upstream things in, in RHEL, in, including Flatpak. Uh, currently, the approach we are doing is that we are building uh, runtimes for specific RHEL versions. So RHEL 8, RHEL 9 uh, would have specific uh, RHEL uh, versions. So one would have the, the life cycle of that one uh, rail version as the life cycle of, the, of that runtime, including uh, the support. As far as I know, uh, we are now going to be shipping some applications as tech preview in rail 8. They are, they are probably already there actually. And uh, they are LibreOffice, GIMP, I think Inkscape. And uh, it's the very same idea as uh, Fedora Flatpaks so and we want to be building them the very same way and make them available on the Red Hat registry. So uh, Flatpak would learn how to to, to deal with the subscription part and, and, and all that. So this is just one more possibility to our users, right? Because uh, one of the, the historical problems uh, we hear from users of Red Hat Enterprise Linux is that the system is rock solid and very stable, but somehow users want to be able to, to use new applications and at the same time benefit from the best of both worlds, right? Receive a lot of updates, but at the same time stick to the rock solid system that they, they love. So I feel that Flatpak really helps us in that story because uh, Flatpak would allow us to uh, have a stream of uh, updates for, for specific apps. And at the same time, the user can keep their basic system uh, rock solid with the, the things that have been heavily tried and tested by, by, by Red Hat for that specific major version. Uh, another advantage I see from this is the bundling dependencies. Uh, a lot of times we are bringing on dependencies in RHEL because they are dependencies of applications we are shipping, but we don't necessarily want uh, users to be consuming those dependencies. And uh, at the same time, once some user starts to consume that dependency, we are supporting that dependency. So it just scales and becomes like exponential combination of dependencies to, to, to support. And uh, with this approach, I, I believe we would be able to bundle some application specific dependencies within the flat pack. And uh, this would bring lots of benefits for us to focus on developing these applications instead of maintaining more and more things. Another aspect that I like about this is that you would allow you to run RHEL 8 uh, applications as flat packs in RHEL 9 and vice versa. Uh, if some regression would appear in an application, you'll be able to mask that commit on, on flat packs. So you'll be able to stick to that version. So you can really have a lot of control of uh, your updates. And I think that that's a great improvement. And this last bit I mentioned about the rail RPMs is the very same thing as Fedora, that uh, the Fedora community has trust, has been building over the years that a lot of people rely on Fedora, build things on Fedora, and rail is the very same thing. Uh, there is a Red Hat employee taking care of every single RPM you see in rail and uh, creating Flatpak runtimes and Flatpak applications from those RPMs, uh, meaning that uh, you are inheriting these, uh, these benefits uh, as well. And uh, as I said before, uh, everything we do is very upstream first. So here I kind of mixed it up a bunch of uh, points, but there's so many more ideas going around in the team about uh, how we can improve our flatback story. Uh, the portal support story is really one that uh, a lot of people are interested on, on improving upstream and that will bring benefits for all distros. 
That is the, the idea that applications need to talk to each other. So we have this XDG desktop portal, which is a service that provides this communication and moderates the, the permission for accessing to certain things out of the, the sandbox. Unfortunately, lots of new applications which are available as flat packs are still not consuming those portals. So recently we had in the GNOME conference a hackfest, and one of the things that was discussed there was exactly this problem, the idea that we should be pushing for more applications to consume information and data through portals instead of exposing file system, exposing devices, exposing other things, poking holes in the sandbox, as we often refer. So uh, we definitely want to put a lot of work into improving our portal story. There is now a lead portal, which is a library that provides programmatically access to, to the portal, so you don't necessarily need to, to be very skillful with the whole debus uh, sending messages and G variants. So that's something nice, but I'd like to really see uh, some effort into improving our portal story and more applications uh, consuming data over portals instead of uh, exposing user data. I think that this should be really a major goal for us to really uh, make a point about security. Uh, we are selling a lot of Flatpak as a secure thing, but uh, it's not just secure by default if we are really not uh, trying to protect the user data proactively. So I, I think that, that that's a good thing. And we also want to get much more engagement. Most of these Fedora flat packs, Ian mentioned those 85 applications, they have been built by a handful of people. So it would be very nice if uh, application developers or people who maintain applications as RPMs would be also interested on in the effort to create Fedora flat packs so we could uh, have more eyes on it, more collaboration on it, and uh, be able to, to really support those, uh, those application specific needs, right? Lots of the flat packs, uh, flat applications, they might need some sort of adaption, some, some certain changes that need to be made to, for them to work well on the flat pack sandbox. So it would be really nice to, to have the people with that specific know-how, the people who are really maintaining those apps or even developing them uh, upstream. Another, another front that uh, we would like to see some work on is uh, CV tracking that we would uh, have a lot of automation in that, in that regard. We could even have Red Hat Insights or things like this, but the ability to, to be able to automatically create flat pack builds based on events, based on other assessments. So the idea that uh, release monitoring could be somehow integrated to these or that the CV comes out and then suddenly there's a bug report and automatic build is done, things like this. And definitely our debug story, uh, we also want to, to improve it because uh, debugging Flatpak applications, it's uh, very doable if you are very familiar with the technology, but it's still not something that we have uh, integrated with ABRT or something that you'd be easily able to ask a user, could you please provide me that backtrace? It's not that simple yet. So uh, this is our major uh, work and it cannot be possibly done just by us. So it would be very nice if uh, people interested on this would approach us. They would uh, also check our Flatpak docs in the, in the Fedora documentation so we can continue improving this story. Uh, are there any questions? Let me just get back to the chat because I've been completely blind about what's going on over there. Hey there, so also oh, there are Q&A. Whoa, lots of them. So let's start from the oldest ones. You you want to take one first, Jan, or should I? <clears throat> uh, how is RPM oh. flatback better for Fedora than source code flatbacks? The answer was in the chat, but uh, uh, very simply, there is a process uh, with RPMs that are checked. Uh, there is a process how to uh, bring new people to uh, maintain uh, RPMs. And the process itself uh, puts some, some control over the source code. Yeah, there's Fedora QE as well. So Fedora apps are reliable. Um, I see here, Matthew, uh, what about shipping the runtime on the Fedora, on the Fedora Workstation Media? Well, that's an interesting question. And we're not, I think it might be a question for the Fedora Workstation working group, but I think that, that that's definitely some, some path that we are going to because it's something that we definitely want for Silverblue. 
and it's necessary in Silverblue. Applications are already pre-installed as flat packs in Silverblue. And uh, I think as we transition this, uh, I'm speaking here as a, as a GNOME contributor and a Fedora contributor. I want to really see Silverblue becoming uh, one of the main workstations, be more proeminent. So I, I feel that this is really related. Let's, let's go one question each. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matthew Miller, uh, what do you think about adding uh, this gate to Flatpak option without going through RPMs and modules first? If I understand correctly, you are meaning more about uh, getting the Fedora sources and then building classic Flatpaks with, with it, like using Flatpak Builder, but from the Fedora sources, is that it? I'm quite not sure about the question. Yes. Yeah, this could be a possibility. I I, I am not sure if uh, if everybody's on board with that, but it sounds to me very reasonable, right? Because it's uh, what we're doing on FlatHub. Yeah, definitely, and uh, and modularity being uh, problematic on its own. <laughs> I was just responding to Matthew on chat saying that there are many moving parts on this process, and yeah, this is something that we definitely want to improve. Uh, our colleague Owen Taylor has done some very decent work on improving the whole Flatpak build processes. I used to build uh, some big applications in the past and it used to take like an hour, two hours, and now everything is much faster. So big shout out to Owen. Um, more questions? Should I read and you will answer? Oh, or maybe if you feel like answering that there's this one about the difference between OCI or OS trees for, for flat packs. Am I supposed to answer? Or are you? Oh, if you want to. <laughs> uh, generally speaking, uh, the main reason why we are using uh, OCI is that it was already uh, for uh, server containers and we just keep to using that. So it was uh, nothing like uh, we want to use something different, but uh, we had something that was working and we, and we just uh, adapted our uh, solution to flat packs. And uh, to, to, the, uh, to the question, uh, does it affect uh, the duplication and install size? I think there there are some uh, significant differences. I don't think it affects in some uh, huge way. Yeah, uh, the the OCI the choice for for OCI also allows us to to publish uh, flatback applications in regular registries, right? The registry is running uh, an application for managing the registry, and they are used to OCI containers. So this allows us for not having to worry about the whole publishing hosting part of the story. The next question is about the future of flatbacks, and we have uh, the future of flatbacks uh, on the end of the presentation. And this question was put uh, before, so I think yeah. we can skip it. Uh, the next question is: There any plan to preserve the runtimes to allow running old flatbacks that are created for those old runtimes? Hmm. I'm not sure we have a plan for this. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, one advantage of Flatpak is that you can, for instance, uh, do a Flatpak run minus minus runtime and pass another another runtime. So the idea that you actually could be texting, testing the, the new runtime without actually having to have a new RHEL installed or a new Fedora installed is a great advantage. So for instance, in, in GNOME upstream, we have a nightly builds of our runtime and we are able to test all the applications against uh, the nightly build and we know as soon as it breaks that it broke. So I, I see that uh, there might be a, a desire to preserve old applications for the sense of not touching what is broken. But I feel that also the advantages of Flatpak allow us to actually be constantly testing uh, the changes in the runtime to make sure that once the runtime reaches its end of life, uh, the applications are pretty ready to switch to a new one to the, to the next runtime. The next question is, uh, when is RHEL anticipated to get flatpacks? 
uh, the answer was in chat. So very simply, uh, RHEL uh, has flat packs, but only in uh, tech preview. That means it's some uh, something that is not entirely official. It is there, but the support is not as good as it will be once it will be uh, released. Okay. And nothing stops you from adding new flat pack repositories to your RHEL system and just installing Fedora flat packs or installing from Flat Earth. Okay, the yeah. next question is uh, Would the RHEL flat pack runtime be available outside of RHEL, say on Fedora? I don't see why not. I'm not sure about it, but I don't see why not. Maybe you should still go through the, the, the subscription manager part of it. So if you would be able to authenticate that, I, I don't see why not, right? But I, I haven't heard conversations about it. I wouldn't be able to give a, a complete answer. Okay, the next question, uh, why does Fedora not ship the FlatHub repo by default? I think it's because of uh, legal reasons. We just can't do that. And there are no free applications on FlatHub, right? So ideally, if we could either filter those or have separate repositories, that would be a solution. But this is a very long and uh, withstanding discussion on the Fedora Workstation Working Group. And uh, if you follow Fedora Devel, this has been discussed. But yeah, it's something that has been being discussed around. We, we really want to make it happen. But yeah, we'll, we need to go around this, these constraints. The next question, I run a FlatHub Flatpak for a JavaScript Electron application in a virtual machine because the Flatpak gives access to user data. Is it feasible to repackage that more securely for Fedora? Uh, generally speaking, it could be possible, but uh, it, uh, it depends uh, what is the reason why it access to user data. Maybe it's uh, it's intended to do that. So uh, we need to know the exact application to know that. And of course, uh, it, uh, it needs to be packaged as RPM. The next question. Uh, what is uh, a runtime when installing Flatpak? Uh, can you do an LI15? Also, why are the, they so big? Are they duplicating the operating system? Uh, so uh, why are runtimes so big? Uh, it's because in runtime, there are uh, plenty of uh, libraries that are commonly used across many applications. It's a, something like a common base for all the applications that target that specific runtime. That's the reason why they are so big. Uh, Imagine they in are, a future where we don't have uh, so many things on the, the host operating system, right? I would like to see a future where the runtime is, is big and the operating system is very light. Um, then there's an, a question for Neil. From you, that is, uh, can the RPMs that make up the RHEL Flatpak runtime get added to the RHEL UBI repos? So the downstreams that use the RPM-based Flatpak build process can use it. Hmm. That's a very good idea. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. I, 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 can, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that, but I think it's, it would be a very good idea for CI, right? Okay, and new question. I would like to be able to start Flatpak based Firefox slash Chrome slash whatever using CNI network configuration to share the same network with Podman containers. Awesome, stupid. In the next release. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really about whether you are poking uh, holes in your Podman container to, to use a certain network interface, right? I am not that very familiar with container internals, but I suppose that if you just let your Podman container have access to the same network interface that 
that uh, your standard system is using, you would achieve that. But yeah, I'm sorry, this is really not the scope I wouldn't be able to answer. Are reaching the six? Well, we are reaching the end of the hour, right? Depending on your time zone. <laughs> and uh, I don't see any more questions. So yeah, I, I hope you folks enjoyed. It was quite short, but we just wanted to, to give a little bit of a report of what's what's happening and a little bit of a call of ac for action. So more folks get engaged and interested on, on consuming and also collaborating with building those those flat packs. So thank you very much for watching. It was a pleasure.